Ho, 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 are you here? Oh, ho, 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 you are here. Welcome, everyone, to four underrated Jimmy Buffett songs, a commentary, uh-huh, from the Paul Leslie Hour. Take it away, Polly. For most people who come to appreciate the songs of Jimmy Buffett, you'll notice an abundance of great songs written and recorded during the 1970s. It was a prolific time for Buffett. He wrote and recorded his most beloved and well-known songs, like Come Monday, A Pirate Looks at Forty, and He Went to Paris. I'm going to explore four great but underrated Jimmy Buffett songs from the 1970s. These are tunes that didn't appear on the Boats, Beaches, Bars, and Ballads box set or the acoustic Songs You Don't Know by Heart album. They're the deep, deep cuts. I'll try to express what I think about these songs, and I'll also share some audio and video recordings to make my points. You'll see clips and quotes from interviews I did with Jerry Jeff Walker, Coral Reefer Peter Mayer, hit songwriter Larry Bastian, and acclaimed singer-songwriter Greg Bridgewater. Keep in mind, I may not mention your favorite Buffett song from the 1970s. Making this list wasn't easy, but let's get going. Some of the best songs are about trains. I hear that lonesome whistle blow and immediately think of City of New Orleans, Midnight Train to Georgia, and Downbound Train. You can probably rattle off half a dozen more. A few of Jimmy Buffett's tunes have mentioned trains, including one of his biggest ever, Come Monday. But it's only natural that a great writer would have a bona fide train song. Railroad Lady is an oldie, and I think one of his most underrated story songs. Interestingly, it's one of Buffett's first co-writes. He wrote it with the late Jerry Jeff Walker. I always like that the story of this railroad dame has an element of mystery. We never know if she ever gets home. She's someone who maybe wouldn't get attention, let alone warrant a song. But in the imagination of Jerry Jeff Walker and Jimmy Buffett, she gets a close study. At the end of the day, she is nonetheless a lady. We mustn't forget. It's something I like about Jimmy Buffett as a writer his acknowledgement of the forgotten folks. I recall asking Jerry Jeff Walker about the song Railroad Lady. We were waterside on a pristine day in Key West, and he chugged coffee. His recollection of the song is as follows. Tell me about the song Railroad Lady. Well, it's just, well, it's a little idea, making up an idea about a, you know, we were on the final run of passenger service. And we got to making up an idea about a woman that might have been a party favor or a bank president or railroad president. And she was going to have to do something very demeaning now that her way of life is being taken away from her. Hmm. We started making a lot of fun of her. We're saying she was cornered in the roundhouse by a smooth talking switchman, sidetracked as it were, derailed. And she in her life. And, and then she was going to have to give up this life because the beds were unsafe. In the railroad beds. So, and we were doing all this tongue and cheek play on word stuff, and it turned out to be pretty neat song. As I see it, it's a very distinctive story, and the music feels like it could go way back. Apparently, Railroad Lady has a special meaning to Buffett as well. In years past, Barbara Bernacki of Chicago submitted a question for Jimmy Buffett in Time magazine. She asked Jimmy about his favorite memory from his hard luck days. Buffett answered, It was the first time that I heard somebody who had recorded one of my songs. It was an old country singer, Lefty Frizzell, and the first song of mine that anybody recorded was called Railroad Lady. As a testament to how great a song Railroad Lady is, just look at the other singers who have recorded it. Willie Nelson, Merle Haggard and J.D. Crow all went on to put their stamp on it. Last year, Dierks Bentley and Ricky Skaggs even performed it live on the Grand Ole Opry. As Willie Nelson told me, I don't know, I think there's something about a train whistle in the middle of the night. Uh, you remember that as a kid growing up. We grew up around 
trains and railroad tracks, and I think they have a big influence on you. Trains are quintessential Americana, a sentiment Jimmy Buffett likely feels. And Railroad Lady indicates a generous country-western ingredient in many of these early songs. It's traditional country with a flair. As the great American author Thomas McGuane put it, what Jimmy Buffett knows is that our personal music history lies at the curious hinterland where Hank Williams and Xavier Cougat meet with somewhat less animosity than the theoreticians would have us believe. I wish I could write like that. Brahma Fear appeared on Living and Dying in Three-Quarter Time, but Buffett has performed it just once in the last 20 years. The song's narrator would like to ride the rodeo, but needs to muster a little more courage, or maybe just become close friends with a bottle of whiskey. I had the chance to talk about this song with the legendary songwriter Larry Bastian, who expressed his appreciation for the lyrics. Every time you think you know where the song is going, it goes another way, Larry said. It was fitting to discuss it with Mr. Larry. After all, he wrote a song entitled Rodeo. I think it's in the same wheelhouse. I've grown in my appreciation of Brahma Fear through the years because of Buffett's understated but self-defining lyrics. Early on, he understood that you can be definable but it won't mean everyone will be able to pin you down exactly. Jimmy Buffett is somewhere below the spotlight. He goes on to reveal, you dig deep enough, you might find me. I love that the catalyst for this snapshot in self-realization is a Brahma bull. Tell me who else could have done it. I love the plaintiff, Livingston's gone to Texas. I'm astounded at Buffett's ability to make me care so much about the characters without revealing much of their backstory. The heartfelt lyrics are mysterious and complement the haunting melody. Together they make one of Jimmy Buffett's greatest songs. Jimmy once prefaced his live performance of Livingston's Gone to Texas by saying, It has a lot of meaning. His longtime friend and guitarist Peter Mayer expressed an appreciation for the song. He told me a little more in this video. Hey, good morning, Paul. Uh, Peter Mayer here. Uh, you asked about Livingston's Gone to Texas. Uh, yeah, I really love this song, man. And I expressed that to Jimmy way back when we played uh, Frisco, Texas. Oh, God, I can't remember the year, but we were finished with rehearsal, and I was standing on the side of the stage. Sometimes I do that just to listen to the sound of the acoustic guitar, make sure everything's good. And he started playing this song. And I said, man, after he was done, he walked over. I said, man, I love that song. I've never heard that. And he goes, oh, yeah, that's from High Cumberland, High Cumberland Jubilee. And I guess it got re-released on Living and Dying three-quarter time. But uh, I said, I want to play that song. And he goes, well, man, join me tonight. Why don't you, why don't you come on up and do that? And he was visibly really pleased Um that, you know, songs have this kind of eternal quality to them. They, uh, the, the stars, the artists, the fame, the, the numbers on the pop charts go up and down, but their presence in our lives and in someone who's going to chance to listen to the song, we're still going to get that brilliance that was there. And, and it is brilliance to me. Um, it's Jimmy in his folk singer, singer-songwriter uh, days, and you really hear the quality. He's got an amazing voice um, that often gets tucked below uh, the live performer that he is in front of 20,000, 15,000 fans, calling out to them to have a good time as he does so well. Uh, but man, he has a beautiful voice and he shows it off on this song. The other thing I love about this song is not only the changes, I'm a big guitar chord guy, but uh, it's just brilliant with its melody and the way it changes keys in the middle. It goes from the key of E uh, down to D, which is just kind of unusual what it does to the melody. I was really caught by that. But really what hits me is the melancholy in this song that Jimmy somehow pulls off in his best writing uh, that, that still makes you feel good inside. Like, hey, this is something we hold in common, uh, that life has got its twists and turns, and 
though we can say nothing, nothing is really different here. We know a lot has changed and you bear a lot in your, in your lifetime. And some of that change is going to happen, uh, regardless of whether, uh, you like it, you wished it, uh, or you willed it. Um, uh, and if you listen to, to a song like Margaritaville, you know, if, that original recorded version is so brilliant. It's, it's got that melancholy to it. It's kind of like someone really <laughs> sitting on a porch, wasting away. And, um, that kind of like middle of the afternoon, like what the heck is going on here kind of thing. And, uh, isn't it amazing how songs have the many faces of Eve, you know, it can resurface as a, a the, the anthem to grab your rum drink or margarita and uh, slug it down and, and all. But anyway, Livingston's Gone to Texas, really wonderful song uh, to me. It's uh, the Jimmy Buffett uh, that I've gotten to know and love. And uh, that's about it for me. Thanks. So whatever happened to Livingston? I'll confess that I too wondered if he ever thought about the tears his woman cried. There's a lot of competition, but I think Wonder Why We Ever Go Home is Buffett's best song to come out of the 1970s. He once referred to it in concert as just a little cowboy song. It may be underrated, but it's definitely gotten more traction than the other songs on this list. Wonder Why We Ever Go Home first appeared on the soundtrack album of the movie Rancho Deluxe. Side note, it's an eccentric story, but has its moments of tenderness. If you're interested in giving it a watch, it's on Tubi. This song has a beautiful melody and really poignant lyrics. Jimmy liked this tune enough to re-record it for the Changes in Latitudes, Changes in Attitudes album, and it also appeared on his first live album, You Had to Be There. Singer and recording artist Nadira Shakur interpreted her own fascinating version of Wonder Why We Ever Go Home on her Nod to the Storyteller album. I spoke about the song with singer-songwriter Greg Bridgewater who released the acclaimed independent album, Sunday Car. He shares enthusiasm for Wonder Why We Ever Go Home. In terms of the song, it embodies what initially hooked me on Buffett's albums, which is the time-freezing take on human nature and self-reflective realization. And in this case, this is happening during what appears to be a meaningful uh, love relationship. And and it's sort of a, a, it's likely demise in the face of the character's predetermined own ambitions and wanderlust. Um, and in this case, the character is Buffett, as he usually is. It's a great song uh, that beautifully encompasses and fuses Buffett's youthful bravado and whimsical, whimsical pontifications, which is what I love about it so much. Well expressed, Greg. I appreciate you letting me prattle on about the underrated Buffett songs of the 1970s. I'd love to hear what you think of these lesser-known gems. I'd also like to give honorable mention to two underrated but brilliant Buffett songs, the Appalachian-tinged Buttermilk Grove, which has never been recorded, and Ain't He a Genius from the very first album. Well, what about you folks? What are your favorite but underrated Buffett songs from the 1970s? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like, subscribe to the channel. The next decade I'll be talking about... Why, it's the 80s. Heidi ho, boys.